Okay, I apologize everyone. I am soaking wet. It is raining outside and I just finished the run. But welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter and this is part two of working on the swapped Honda Ground. In the last video, we basically tore everything down and looked over the good and the bad and the ugly. Well, in today's video, it was supposed to be a, a much longer video where I did a handful of mods. But I decided to make this a dedicated chain and sprockets 428 conversion because I couldn't find anything on YouTube on how to do this conversion with grinding the motor and making it fit. And then in the next video, that's where we're gonna actually put everything back together with a, a few tasteful mods and basically make this thing shine. So I keep looking over there because the ground is over there. But if I turn the camera around, you're gonna see the new color of the ground as well as all the new mods because it's already all done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, let's get started. So currently on the bike, we have a 520 setup, which is the stock 250 chain of sprockets. The reason why we're swapping it out is because with the 520, we have a roller system over here. So when this is running and spinning, it sounds super loud and annoying. So what we're gonna be doing is a 428 conversion, which is a 33 tooth rear sprocket, 16 tooth front sprocket, and then the 428 chain. So. This setup, I got it from the previous owner. He already did the research and everything and also already spent the money. To do the swap though, is not as straightforward as usual um, chain sprockets install. And that's, uh, we're gonna have to grind down the engine a little bit so we have some clearance for the chain. But before we start grinding down anything, we need to move everything that's in the way. The first thing I did was loosen the rear set so that I'm able to twist it to gain access to the roller boat later as well as pop off the master link to remove the chain. For this next part, it's completely optional, but I decided to remove the shifter so I had as much room as possible when it came time to grind the motor, as well as removing the front sprocket. Now for those who are confused on why we're even grinding the motor to begin with, let me show you why. Originally, the setup has a roller that redirects the chain so it doesn't hit any major components on the bike. But since we're not using the roller anymore, means the chain is routed directly from the front sprocket to the rear sprocket, and the angle of how the chain is routed, well, it will hit this section of the motor. Luckily, this area of the motor is able to be grinded down and will not harm the motor. And since we're converting to a smaller chain and sprocket, means that we'll have more than enough clearance for the chain to spin freely. Unfortunately, if you choose to keep the 520 setup, then this method will not work because the chain and sprockets are too big and you won't be able to grind enough of the motor to get the proper clearance. But back to the grinding. I used a cone grinder so I had a better approach angle, but as you're grinding, take your time and let the grinder do the work. My objective is just to grind away the width of the chain and get as close to the chain cover boat as possible. but it should look something like this. Now it's time to do everything in reverse, but with a new chain and sprockets. But before I do, let me show you the difference between the stock ones versus the new ones. It's definitely smaller, but it's a thick boy. This smaller sprocket and the combination of the 428 chain is what gives us the clearance we just grinded away. Now for the rear sprocket, all you have to do is just pop off the rear wheel, zip off the four nuts, and then replace it with the new sprocket. It's really as simple as that. Oh, and for the rear sprocket, it's also smaller and thicker as well. Now in order for us to figure out how many links we need for our new chain, we need to measure the distance from the front sprocket to the rear. From there, we can use the chain calculator and plug in all the known info we have, and voila. But removing links is pretty simple. Just get a chain breaker tool and press out the links that you want to remove. From there, you take a master link and connect the two ends of the chain together. If you bought a sealed chain, then you would have four O-rings to install as well. But this chain that I got from the previous owner is an unsealed chain, 
which means there are no O-rings. Nonetheless, take the master clip, pop that on, and make sure you clip it towards the rear sprocket. And last but not least, the front sprocket cover. In order to do this, all I used was a pair of snips to notch it out. And as far as the chain roller that we were deleting, well, I was too cheap and lazy to run to the hardware store to find a shorter bolt to replace it. So all I did was flip it around. It was as simple as that. But we'll see later if we have any issues with that. Nonetheless, that's all we have for today's video. In the next one, we'll be changing the color of the fairings, as well as installing the new exhaust, extended fuel tank, and putting everything back together. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have done so already, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.